My work hours increased maybe to 15 to 20 hours per day because I ran away from that and just wanted to be in the office all the time. And, and you need to hire fast and fire fast. Okay, go for it. Where does it bring you to? There's no company culture. Everybody hates you. Welcome to Mastery Podcast, where we talk about balancing all aspects of life while pursuing our passion as entrepreneurs and business owners. I am your host, Dr. Sass, and welcome, Mr. Pascal Buckman. Pascal is a CEO of Strategy Achievers, where they build brands that drive impact. And today, we're going to talk about Empowering Mastery. Welcome to Mastery Podcast again, um, Pascal. It's, it's, it's nice to have you here always. Thank you, likewise. And um, Pascal, throughout your journey from overcoming personal and business bankruptcy to becoming a successful entrepreneur and life coach, what key strategies did you kind of employ that you use to not only rebuilding, but also thrive in your professional and personal life? I almost forgot that I have a bankruptcy personal <laughs> and business. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> but Sorry. The, <laughs> that's that's fine. Didn't, didn't mean to bring no, up no, the no, old, doesn't, old wounds. <laughs> doesn't hurt me. Uh, but key strategies, I mean, I think we should learn from the past. And, and that's what I did. And for me, all the strategies that I used today uh, implementing knowledge from from things that I failed. I, I that's a big one from for me. I learned that again. It's a choice. We had that in our last uh, episode. But if something happened in any journey, and we feel like okay, no, that's a problem. That's a choice to call it a problem. We have a choice. Is that is that stone in our roadblock, in our way in front of us? Is it the roadblock or is it the building block that I can use for, for my foundation in business mm -hmm. and life? And that's something I adopted. I just decided to, to reflect. And I think that's the advice I gave last time at the end of the episode. That's what I do too. I step back. Shit happens. <laughs> Uh, I step back instead of just react and say, okay, what can I learn from it? Is it really a problem or is it knowledge that I can apply for my journey in the future? And that's why the key strategies that I apply is think, have clarity, know exactly what you want, know why you want it, be aware always who you are, in other words, you are capable to do anything, but come up with a very clear plan, step by step on how you implement the stuff. And, and there are different ways on how to do that. But, but for me, it's, it's that. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, that's a lot in a nutshell, right? All those stuff that you kind of say it in one word, think come up with a plan and, and all this stuff, they all involve like many steps and um, becoming aware. How can you becoming aware of, of where you're at? And really you you kind of let go of the emotion and, and think objectively, right? Not subjectively. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that's a great advice. Now, in, in your work, Pascal, you emphasize a lot, a lot, and, and I hear this almost every day. <laughs> you emphasize the importance of balancing health, mind, harmony, and wealth. Now, can you share a transformative experience that kind of underscore, like kind of just like highlight the necessity of this balance for achieving through success? Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm glad you asked that. That's part of what I do, right? The core four, uh, mm -hmm. health, mind, harmony, and wealth. But before I go into that, just like brief 30 seconds to what you said before, uh, I think it's super important to, and, and this is an exercise you guys can do, become aware 
of your personal capability of getting stuff done, achieving things, your story, who are you, right? Take a piece of paper and go back in your life, down in your childhood, back to your childhood, write down bullet points, just random, no grammatical things matters and all that stuff, but write down all the achievements that you had in your life. Maybe you're a mom, you have a healthy son or a daughter. Maybe you have, you were a cheerleader or you were whatever. I won an award. I was fighting at a world championship. I built eight businesses in four different industries. I am a father of two healthy daughters. I'm, you know, right stuff. Like when you are in that exercise, you start to see, hey, like this thing is getting long. <laughs> <laughs> and you start to realize, and, and all this stuff pops up. These are all achievements that were the result of your actions. So you are capable of doing anything. And that's why I actually created the concept, because I start to realize that everything, literally everything is interconnected. If I have financial problems, it affects my health. It affects my relationships with friends and family. I just don't show up as the fulfilled, happy person that I could slash should be. It affects each other, all these areas of life. If I'm not healthy, how can I perform on my highest level in business, in my relationship? If I don't have harmony in life, right? I don't do my hobbies. I don't do stuff that I feel like this gives me joy, love, happiness. How can I be fulfilled and express that fulfillment in my relationships with my spouse, husband, wife, kids, in my work? It just doesn't work. Something always suffers and, and doesn't get the attention that it should get in order to be completely fulfilled. And that's why this interconnectedness in, within all areas of our lives is something that I started to realize and really, really start to pay attention to. That's why health, mind, harmony, wealth. Uh, I, I'm, I'm doing something in all areas of life every single day to ensure that I grow in all areas to be fulfilled by it. because at the end we all we all do the things that we do in business and life and in all areas for one simple reason fulfillment right right so it's very important to grow in our area if one area is kind of unbalanced it affects everything that's 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 what you're saying um, give give an example like of one situation in your life and we we all been through this you know we're not 100 percent balanced all the time at one point in your life like something really stood out that when you say i'm unbalanced i need to fix this part of of my life can yeah. you give us a, a one example of that for me one of the of the key things was my relationship i was married and I was in a relationship that I just didn't feel fulfilled. I feel obligated. Mm -hmm. Not just my wife wasn't bad. She just was who she is. I was just who I am. And still did I have beliefs, subconscious beliefs. I let these beliefs pressure my being. I had to believe that this is what society expects from a husband, how a husband should be, how a father should be, what he should feel, what he should do. And that just didn't feel that way. I came home. I felt like I hope everybody's asleep. I just don't want to deal with kids, especially when they're small, they stink, they shit around, they throw up. Like, oh no, like I, I can't do anything for it. This is how, I've, how I felt. I didn't enjoy it at all. Even the church back then, when I went to church, 
they ask me like, how is it? Uh, it's so nice to be a daddy. And I said like, no, it's not. You're kidding, right? Like, no, I'm not. I don't enjoy it. Like I work 10, 12 freaking hours, come home, want to be my, see my kids, take them in my arm. And all they do is cry. And then I give it to my wife and they stop immediately. Why should that be nice? Just stop lying. Like, don't pretend because you feel you have to. So I never really had that feeling. And then, like I said, the relationship with my wife, uh, we started to live. Your ex-wife. Uh, or with my ex-wife, <laughs> you know, we started to live two different. Back then, she was my wife. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we started to live two different lives and it just didn't match anymore. And all that, to come to your point, affected my business how I operated, it affected my health in a positive way because I went away from that and put everything in health, fitness and, and all that stuff. But overall, I was just not in balas. I didn't do what I enjoy. I didn't hang out with who I want to hang out. I just work like my work hours increased maybe to 15 to 20 hours per day. Uh, because I, I run away from that and just wanted to be in the office all the time. And, and so that that is one of the main things, I believe, that uh, stood out for me. Yeah, th thank you for sharing that part of your life. And, and I believe this is um, also an issue with a, a, lot, a lot of couples, a lot of people out there who stay in the relationship just because they feel obligated. And, and and that does affect everything in your life and then you end up running away from from that and and become a workaholic and it's that's it doesn't do anybody any good um you know with the person that you're staying with also Especially also for the kids and like for the kids, they start right. to have the belief that this is a, how a relationship is my mom and dad this is normal this is how they live life this is how they treat each other. This is, there's no tenderness. There's no, we go do stuff together. There's no, all that stuff. The kids believe that this is how a relationship should be. And, and what do most parents do? They stay together because of the kids, these poor kids. They, like, out of love and care, they create something that they regret later if, in case they wake up. Yeah, I think you just open a can of worms. We can talk about this subject <laughs> yeah. all day long. And everybody have different opinions about it. Sure. And at the end of the day, you yourself must be happy with all these different areas of your life. And if you are unhappy in the relationship, then it starts affecting your wealth and your health and your businesses. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying to, you know, you're not happy, you, you stop get a divorce and run run apart mm -hmm. from each other. That's not what I'm saying at all. Communicate. Try to find the root cause. Try to make it work. It's worth to fight for it. But you also need to be realistic. At one point, it needs always both. We know that from coaching and mentoring. Uh, if you coach and mentor someone, they need to have that one thing that all of them need, otherwise you better stop or don't start. They need to be coachable. Mm -hmm. And if you have two pe pe people in a party and not both truly want to fix whatever it is, it's not going to work. Right. And, and, and then you have to look at each other, be realistic, be honest, and do whatever you need to do for your own life and health, because you have one. And that's exactly. yours. Yeah, be, be empowered to, to create that balance in, in your life, whatever that may be. Now, um, Pascal, uh, to, to kind of um, uh, bring, bring the subject back to, to this empowerment, right? You have a unique approach to leadership and team building as seen through all your work, and especially with strategy achievers. Um, you have an amazing team. What philosophy? drives your method of cultivating this strong company culture and team culture? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something that uh, many CEOs and business owners and, and, and 
do completely different or maybe even disagree. I do it like that. I just care. Empathy. I care. For me, my head of operations just have that position of being the head of operations. But there's a human being behind that position. And this is where I focus. Human being. He has a family. He has three kids. We met the kids together. Right. Uh, we, I, I just care for the human being. I have empathy. I truly care. I want them to grow personally. I want them to grow their skills that they do for me in the company. And I allow them to make mistakes. For me, that's the dumbest thing you can do as a CEO. Hire and fire. You need to hire fast and fire fast. Okay, go for it. Where does it bring you to? There's no company culture. Everybody hates you. Uh, like I tell my employees always like, guys, you are allowed to make mistakes. Make mistakes. We can grow together. Because with the next hire, the next problem comes. So I allow them to make mistakes, but I expect two things. I expect them to take ownership from it and learn. And I expect willingness to change and grow. So if they are coachable and they are willing to grow, and if they are willing to own the responsibility for what they did, then they are team members. And everybody from all my team members, I want to know the five core values. I let them go through the Gallup Strength Finder. I want to know the five core strength because that helps me to lead them. I know exactly your core values. I know your main strength. And if you do whatever you do, I go to that sheet and I start to understand you. I start not to judge. I come in again with empathy as a human being to a human being. We look at the so stuff and then we create solutions on how to get rid of whatever it is and to make it better together as a team. And that's with all my team members. And this is how we create a company culture so that we operate as a true team and not just as a bunch of people that work together and get stuff done and time for money traders and stuff like that. No, they know my vision. They know why I try to achieve what I try to achieve and they want to be part of it. I always tell them I never hire people who work for me. I always hire people who work with me to achieve my vision. So all the, there's a lot of stuff in it, but that's, that's a strategy that I use for my team. And that's why we, we love each other. <laughs> it's, it's just nice. Like, let's, let's go and do work because work is not work. It's trying to achieve something that we all believe in. Yeah, th th there it goes. You um, treat your employees, your workers as a human being, have compassion, know their values, know what their strengths are and, and make sure you communicate your vision with them so you work together as, as a team and not they working for you, they're working with you towards, towards the goal. Um, that they're really wise there and, and I see how you lead your team. They love you. <laughs> even, <laughs> even when they, you let them go for, for whatever reason, they're like, oh, you're the greatest boss that I ever have. And, and I've seen that. And that, that, that's an uh, amazing, amazing task for a CEO to, to accomplish. So thank you for that wisdom, Pascal. And mm -hmm. um, one, one last question before I let you go. Given your goal to empower, I believe you said 15 million doers to become healthy and successful leaders, what measures, what thing are you putting in place to reach that impact, this wide audience, and especially considering the, you know, all the challenges that people out there have. The way I decided to achieve that is the first step is building 
my personal brand mm -hmm. and keep expanding it and then help other help other achievers goal getters doers build their brand i ensure that they come from the place of purpose to have more impact and me helping them building their personal brand leads me to achieving that goal i just believe that today's society we need leaders true leaders goal getters achievers people who get stuff done people who don't wait for the change but decided to be the change achievers and 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 these are the people that we're looking for we for example you know that we only onboard 10 clients every single month because we stay away from i call it ego features mm -hmm. like if you want to be in Forbes and all these platforms for your ego, you're not, a, you're not our client. We build stable brands that you said it in the beginning that drive impact. And these brands are going to impact hundreds of thousands of people with their work because they know their identity, they have a clear vision, they are on mission, they know their core values, they know their target audience, they know their current state of their target audience, their desired state of their target audience, and they know what, what this society in their industry needs in order to create the world that you and I want to live in, that you and I, that we are all want to live in. And my contribution on how to achieve that is create leaders and put them into spotlight so that they can shine and have impact. Thank you. It's amazing. And, and that's how you can reach uh, more people, right? Is yeah. to create and to support more leaders out there who really have the, the desire to impact the world in, in, in a positive way. C Create multiplica multiplicators. Is it correct? Multiplicators? Yeah. yeah. Create multiplicators. Yeah. Yeah. So you create ripple effects yeah. through one person, two person, two people becomes multiple because the people you are impacting are leaders right. who are impacting even more leaders. And um, it goes on and on and on. and, and Sorry for that, like, but even with us, right, we do, we have a call, uh, a show called Pascal and Zaz Show, which is do that for fun from time to time. We, we talk about random stuff, but we have so many people who come to us and that we never thought like, oh, they look all the episodes. They know exactly what we're talking about. They make notes. They show me the notes here. This is a quote that I wrote down and, and like literally like almost every Every other day, someone come and say, hey, that was so wise and thank you so much. And like, we look at each other and say, really? Like, we impact so many people through the things that we consider normal. And yeah, we just did that for fun. Like, there are hundreds or thousands of people who receive that stuff, take it serious, apply it in their lives. And so that's why, like, the ripple effect is so huge. It's so huge. Absolutely. It is huge. And th thank you, Pascal, for your time. And um, there you go. Um, be empowered and um, take the advice from Pascal here, who have built so many different businesses and check out his, his team. <laughs> they are there to support you and drive even more impact. Thank you, Pascal. Thanks for having me. Thank you, our audience. And um, Stay tuned, there's more to come.